What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. It's been a while. My name is Jacob Brown. I'm a stylized 3D artist working in the games industry and in this video I want to show you how I texture this little asset. You can grab the substance file for free on my Gumroad to follow along. Link will be in the description. This tutorial is a free chapter from a longer series I have created where you will learn to create this asset from scratch starting with the blocking out in Blender, moving on to sculpting in ZBrush, coming back into Blender to prepare our low poly asset and then UV unwrap it. Then we go into texturing in Substance Painter, which is this beautiful video you are watching right now. And in the final two chapters, I show you how to light and present your assets, and we will go over creating images and renders for your portfolio. If that sounds interesting to you, you can find the link to the full course in the description below, and you can get 20% off for the first week. All right, without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, so we have everything ready now to paint and texture in Substance Painter. We're gonna go to our Layers tab, and I'm just gonna add a folder. We can remove this initial layer and let's just call this first folder wood. Let's add our first fill layer. We're gonna click add fill layer here and let's just call this one base. We can scroll down here in the properties. We just want to control the color. Let's also turn on the roughness, bring the roughness up to about 0.9 and then find a dark browny kind of wooden color. Let's now duplicate off this hitting control D. Let's rename this to base layer variation light let's just change the color of this one by upping the value and maybe bringing down the saturation slightly if we right click on this layer now and add a bitmap mask let's search for a grunge removing the texture parameter and i like to use this grunge a lot it's grunge map 004 it comes by default in social Painter. so let's just click on this one and we get a result like this let's go to here add an effect add filter filter and then we want to add a blur slope we can go down and set the blending mode from blur let's try minimum and bring up the intensity and we can also play with the tiling of the grunge map maybe something like so and uh, you can play with the balance if you want and the contrast something like that is nice and let's just bring the opacity of this layer way down something between 10 and 15 is fine Let's now duplicate this layer and we're gonna call this space variation dark. We can just set the blending mode here from normal to multiply, go to our grunge map and just change the random seed. We can increase the opacity of the layer until we have something quite faint, but we see some variation in the wood color now. I'm gonna add a, another fill layer and it's just color. Grab this eyedropper tool, grab a brown like this, bring up the brightness. And then we want to right click, add a bitmap mask and search for curvature. This is our baked curvature map and click it. Let's add a levels now. And we just want to isolate the wood grain and edges of our meshes. So we're going to drag this up like here and then also grab the white version. So we've isolated like this and then we can call this edge highlight blurred. We can add another filter. Let's use a blur filter and we can play around with this and maybe bring down the opacity of the layer. Let's duplicate and remove the blur, play with the opacity. I'm just gonna add a black mask, the wood folder by right clicking, add a black mask. And then over here, we can use polygon fill and we can change the fill mode from either try, face, object, or UV island. I'm just gonna use object and let's select all our wooden objects. The base wood is looking a little dark to me. So I am gonna change back the base color and just bringing up the value, maybe reducing the saturation slightly. That feels a little nicer. Let's go back and play with our highlights again. We can remove in the name blurred or a non-blurred highlight and just play with the opacity of this. That looks pretty good. Let's add another fill layer and we're gonna set this to multiply straight away. And we can just add a bitmap mask, search for ambient occlusion, select this, add a levels effect and then immediately invert this effect and drag the middle across towards the white. And you can see we have some kind of ambient occlusion now in our base color. And you can play around with the sliders until you get something you like. Usually this one towards the white, maybe even add a blur filter, see how that looks. And then we can play around with the opacity of this layer. Okay, let's add some gradients. I'm gonna add a new folder and just call this one gradients. This folder is inside of the wood folder and I'm setting a fill layer inside this. Set the blender mode to linear dodge add. We can go up here 
in projection properties and change this from UV projection to planar projection. And wherever the blue axis is facing is which way it will project. Let's just move it like so. And we can change the hardness. And then I'm gonna rename this and call it a top beam gradient. We can also rename this to AO for ambient occlusion. Let's add a black mask to our first gradient. And we just want to select the top beam with our polygon fill tool. Now let's go back to our gradient and start playing with the color a bit until we get a nice color like so. And then bring down the opacity on this. We can now duplicate this gradient layer, add a black mask again. And then we want to select the signboard itself with our polygon fill tool. Let's go here and if we click on the material ball and then click up here, show high transform manipulator, we can move this projector around again. Holding shift and rotating, I go 90 degrees and then I can add the gradient down here to the bottom of the signboard. Gonna duplicate it once more, add a black mask. Let's select the main beam. I want to put this one up the top. So there is our gradient. That's pretty much our wood finished. Let's move on to metal next. We're gonna add another boulder, call this one metal, and add a fill layer. Let's just change this to something like this color. Adding a black mask on the metal folder and quickly just select all our metal pieces with the polygon fill tool. Okay, now we have all our metal pieces set. Let's go to our base layer. We can call this base. And then we want to also affect roughness and we can select metallic. Let's bring the roughness to around halfway. And I'm going to set the metallic to around 0.7 and bring up the brightness a little bit. The metallic can look quite different in Substance Painter than in your rendering software. So it takes a bit of trial and error sometimes going between where you want to render and where you're texturing to get the right values for your metallic and roughness. For instance, right now in Substance Painter, this looks a little plasticky. You can increase the metallic value if you want and play around with the roughness. This looks a little more metallic. We're gonna duplicate and we want to add in some color variation now. So let's grab the color and add in maybe some dark greens, desaturated greens. We're gonna add the same grunge mask to this layer that we used before. Add a filter and under filter, we're gonna select blur slope, set the blending mode to min and increase the intensity. Let's reduce the opacity on this layer, maybe change the roughness slightly. I'm not a fan of this color right now, so let's play with the color until we have something we like. A little more orange. Maybe not so dramatic in the roughness. Let's just call this one variation. Let's add a fresh fill layer. And I want to use this as a edge highlight. So we're going to add a bitmap mask and look for our curvature map. And then add a levels filter. And we can go in pressing C. We can change what we're viewing. So right now we have the base color. And there's the height, roughness, so on and so forth. So on the base color, we can see a little better what we're doing adjusting the levels until we have those edges isolated. This is a little harsh for me, so I'm going to reduce the opacity on the edge highlights. Let's rename it to edge highlight, and we can also adjust the roughness and metallic for these, or maybe just the roughness. I'm just going to bring it up slightly so the edges are a little rougher. Now let's add a, another layer. We're going to use the AO mask again. Just call this ambient occlusion. Set it to multiply. Add a bit map mask. Look for your ambient occlusion. Add a levels effect. Invert that straight away. And then bring the middle over. And let's bring the color down to darker so we can see a bit better. Go back to our levels. And just play with, play with our levels until we have something we like. Maybe even try adding in a blur filter. A little bit of blur. And let's bring down the opacity of the color. I think it's looking a bit dark in the base color. So I'm just going to go back to the base and bring up the color a little bit. And there we have our metal. Let's move on to the rope next. I'm just adding another folder, calling it rope. Add a base layer, call it base. And let's isolate these rope parts. Because we baked the rope as one mesh, if we isolate one, it should grab all of them. So I just clicked on this. Let's change the color of the base to see and yeah got all of them so let's try and get like a desaturated orange yellowy color for the rope let's also turn on roughness and bring that way up to like 0.9 and look for a nice color for our rope something around there and we can add another layer just by duplicating our base let's set this one to multiply and add a bitmap 
curvature. We want to go and add a levels invert. And now we have darker on the insets of the rope. We can play around with our levels until we have something we like. Move something like this and just bring down the opacity on that layer so it's not so harsh. This also add a bit of color variation to the rope. So just changing this to a lighter variation and then bitmap mask grunge. And we're going to look for that grunge map 004 again. And in the grunge map, we can change the tiling and maybe adjust the color a bit more so we can see it a little clearer. Something like that I think is fine. And I think that's okay for our rope for now. That's pretty much the materials already, but we want to, to decorate our wooden signpost a bit. So let's go back to our wood. Before our ambient occlusion, let's add another folder and we can just call this one paint. Add a fill layer, we can leave it to white. Let's call this one icon because we are gonna paint a little icon with it that I prepared in Photoshop. So if we add a black mask and then I'm just gonna look for an alpha. If we go here and then select project, we can see all the alphas that we have imported ourselves into the project that we're working on. I'm just going to import an alpha that I made in Photoshop. So I'm importing this tavern icon and then setting it to alpha and then import it to project PT signpost import. If we scroll down here in our properties of our paint, we have this stencil area. We can then drag and drop the alpha we imported into our stencil. And then we have it here on our screen. Holding down S, you have the controls over here in the viewport. And we're just going to position this stencil into place. Something around here looks good. And now I can increase my draw size and just go over the stencil and there we have it. And we can press X here on the stencil that we just added to this paint property and it removes that. And then we can duplicate this layer, add a black mask and we can paint in other details, anything you like. I'm just gonna start painting in some different patterns and seeing what I can come up with. I'm just gonna redo the beer mug icon. I think it's a bit big right now. So clicking on the mask of that, I'm just gonna add a black mask again and then re-put the stencil in the stencil slot and repaint. Now on the paint folder, I'm gonna add a bitmap mask. I'm gonna look for curvature and add our curvature map. And we can add a levels to this mask again and just play around until we have something we like. This way it feels like the paint maybe when painting didn't get into the very deep parts of the cracks and just adds a little nice little extra touch. Under the paint folder, let's add another folder. I'm just gonna put all the paint layers we have in there for now. And we can just call this one grunge mask. And we're going to add the same grunge mask we always use. Let's see how that looks. Okay, maybe actually let's look for a different one. I'm going to try maybe grunge cobweb. Let's up the contrast and the balance. And maybe bring down the tiling. Let's add a filter and a blur slope filter. Bring up the intensity. And then just play with our cobweb mask again till we get something we like. We can change the seed, maybe something like that, and just adds an extra level of wear to the paint. And there we go. We have now textured this little asset. We can now go to File, Export Textures, and then choose where we want our textures to be output. I'm going to output them in the texture folder of our project. And if we click here on the name, we can choose which ones we want to output. We already did it with the normal map so we could unwrap the ropes properly. So I'm just going to keep what I already selected and let's hit export. Okay, cool. Now save your projects. And there we go. We have our fully textured assets all finished up in Substance Painter. If you enjoyed the video and learned something new, feel free to hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel out. You can check out more content on stylized art on my channel with more to come in the future. Thanks again for sticking around and I will see you in the next one.